If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to solve for the tension in part A, we're going to apply the sum of the torques and set that sum equal to zero since the beam is in equilibrium. Of course, when summing the torques, we have to select a pivot. And what we can do for part A is select the hinge as the pivot point. And the reason we do that is because then we don't have to worry about any of the forces that the hinge is exerting on the beam because those forces would produce a torque of zero anyways. So we can disregard for now any forces produced by the hinge. What we cannot disregard is the force of gravity which acts at the center of the beam as well as the tension force which is holding the beam up. So we could draw that tension force directed up and to the left. We'll label that force T and then the gravitational force we'll label as W to represent the weight of the beam. Now, to determine the torque produced by the weight force, we have to multiply the magnitude of that force by the distance from where that force acts to the pivot, which would be half of the length of the beam, so we could call that L divided by 2, times the sine of the angle between the force and the beam, so we're looking for that angle right there. Now, it might be a little bit challenging to see what that angle is. We were told that the angles marked in black were 30 degrees each, so that's 30 and that's 30. That would make this angle right here 120, so that the sum of the three angles in the triangle is 180. Of course, then we would know, if we look carefully at the picture, that this angle right here and this angle right here are congruent. They're equal to one another. They're alternate interior angles. And so that's 120 degrees. That makes this angle right here 60 degrees, because it forms a nice straight line with the 120 degree angle and therefore sums up to 180. So this angle is indeed 60 degrees. And we can therefore multiply by the sine of 60 when developing the torque for the weight force. Now, about this pivot, the weight force is tending to rotate the beam in a clockwise fashion. So that actually means that its torque will be negative. On to the torque produced by the tension force. Remember, we're summing the torques. We have to multiply the magnitude of the force by the distance from where that force acts to the pivot, which would be the full length of the beam. We can call that L. And then multiply by the sine of this angle. We know this is 30 degrees. The beam is in equilibrium, so once again we could set the sum of the torques equal to zero. We'll notice that L can be divided out of the equation. And then we can solve for T by adding this term over to the right side, and then dividing both sides by sine of 30. We'll then go ahead and plug in the given value for the weight, which was 222 newtons. And when we compute that, we get a tension of approximately 192 newtons, so that is the correct answer to part A. Now on to part B. If we look at the hinge, it's time now to include the forces that are acting on the hinge. Basically, you can think about it this way. The beam is pushing up against the wall, so the wall is going to push back with a force of equal magnitude. We could label that as FH, the horizontal force. Also, the beam is tending to try to slide down the wall. The hinge is preventing it from doing so because it's exerting a force upward, and we can call that FV for a vertical force produced by the hinge. The next step is to break the tension into an x and y component. So we'll go ahead and draw those components and then try to find their magnitudes. Now we've drawn the x and the y component of the tension. To get the expression for the x and y components, we actually need to figure out what this angle is right here. Notice it's not the 30 degree angle, so we can actually get rid of this just temporarily. We know up here is a 30 degree angle, which means that this angle here is indeed 30. And then we have a 90 degree angle right here, so that would make this angle right here 60 degrees. Hopefully we can see that. So once we know that that's 60 degrees, we can quite easily say that this component, the x component, is tension times the cosine of 60 degrees, and then the y component is tension times the sine of 60 degrees. We can now see that we can set the magnitude of FH, which is a horizontal force, equal to the magnitude of the other horizontal force because the beam is in equilibrium. So the force pointing to the right must be equal in magnitude to the force pointing to the left. We'll then plug in the known value for T that we solved for in part A. And when we compute that, we get a value of approximately 96 newtons. So that would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, we need to find the vertical component of that hinge force. So that's FV. We could set the two 
upward y-forces equal to the single downward y-force. Once again, we'll do that because the beam is in equilibrium. Let's subtract T sine 60 from both sides. And then we can plug in the known values for the weight and the tension. And computing that gives us a value of approximately 55.7 newtons. So that will be the vertical component of the force of the hinge on the beam. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution.